Hello, my name is Richard and I'm the pastor of the King's Church in Adelston in Surrey. And I'm all right, it's just everyone else. Have you ever heard someone say that to you uh, when you ask them how they're doing? I'm all right, it's just everyone else. I know at least two people who say that on a pretty regular basis. Um, I've heard many people say it and I've said it myself uh, sometimes and I think it, if I'm honest, an awful lot or something along those lines, I, th I think those things. It makes me smile um, when uh, I, I hear people talking like that. They're, they're kind of tongue in cheek, but you know, it's the idea that I'm just fine. Um, if it, it's everyone else, you know, if they weren't so annoying or so um, incompetent or so ignorant, then, you know, life would just be okay. You know, it's the idea that things would be great if I was just left on my own to be me. It's the idea that if just everyone else in the world thought and spoke and acted like me, then there wouldn't be any problems. Um, it's the idea that I don't have any issues, it's everybody else. And it's their issues that give me issues. But if it wasn't for them, I'd be fine. You know, um, if those people over there were to change things, then things would be better because they just need to come around to doing things my way. Um, it's that way of thinking of thinking, well, it's nothing really to do with me. It's my company or it's the system around me or the society I live in. It's not my fault. It's the, the big system, the big scheme around me. It's their fault, not my fault. I'm all right. It's everyone else. Now, as I say, that's usually said uh, a bit tongue in cheek um, with a bit of fun to it. But usually, if we're honest, there's a bit of truth when people say that kind of thing in, inside of all of us. You know, uh, in order for the world to be right, we tend to think, you know, it would be best if people just saw things my, the way I see things, um, do things the way I do them. Now, we're going to look again at the parable that we looked at last week, um, where Jesus tells this, this story of two men who go to pray in the temple. One is a Pharisee and the other is a tax collector. One is seemingly a good person, the other is seemingly a bad person. One is a religious leader or a mentor, uh, the other is a national traitor. Um, so who would you look to for inspiration as a role model? One to follow, one to learn how to pray uh, from, one to learn how to to view the world from? Who, who would you think you would expect Jesus to say, follow this guy or do it like this person? Now, on first uh, appearances, the answer might be obvious. You know, um, the Pharisee, obviously. Why would you want to do anything like a tax collector? Um, as we looked at last week, tax collectors were regarded as the lowest of the low. But Jesus likes to stir things up a bit and he likes to expose false ideas, uh, false spirituality. He likes to um, undo people's thinking about what God's like and show people who, what God was really like. Um, and if Christianity was a word back then, because of course it wasn't, um, that came later, he'd probably like to sort of say, you've got the wrong idea about Christianity. So in this story, the Pharisee seems to have turned prayer into some kind of contest, you know, a contest in which he thinks he's winning. He's the best and he's the good person and he's doing this right. And by comparison, he's top of the tree. He thanks God that he is not like other people. He, he says by implication really that I'm all right, it's everyone else. You know, I'm good, everyone else is crooked. I'm right, everyone else is wrong. And then he goes on to list um, the, the people that he's not like. He says, I'm not like a robber or I'm not like a crook. I'm not like an adulterer. And then he gets really personal. He's really specific and he just singles out this guy praying just in the background somewhere in, in the temple. And he says, well, I'm not like him. At least I'm not like him, a tax collector. Wow. I mean, did he even know that guy? I'm all right. It's, it's everybody else. I'm not like them. So contrary to our first impressions of, of these two characters, the Pharisee and the tax collector, based on maybe on their job descriptions, their titles, if you like, their social standing, it turns out that the Pharisee is pretty obnoxious. Um, not someone you would want to be around and probably not somebody you would want to be doing some learning from in terms of how to pray and how to view the world. I mean, his attitude is this. I am good. I am right. I do the right thing all of the time. 
I don't do wrong things. I'm not like other people. They get it wrong. They are wrong. They do things wrong, but I'm not like that because I get it right. In short, I'm all right. It's everyone else. Now that's, if that's taken seriously, that's a very arrogant view of self and of the world. It seems to have boiled life down to some of this very competitive, um, merit-based existence um, and, and saying, I'm the top of the tree, I've got it all right, and everybody else, they just got it wrong. It's not a very appealing characteristic. I mean, you probably agree. But if we're honest, we're all like it in some way. We all have opinions that the way we do things is right and the way other people do things is wrong. We all have beliefs that we think are right and others are wrong. We say in church, yes, I'm a sinner saved by grace. But then we pass judgment on others, thinking that we're better than by saying things like, I thank you, God, that I'm not like other road users, but I'm a good driver. You know, I thank you, God, I'm not like my neighbours, but I put my rubbish and my recycling in the correct bins. I thank you, God, I'm not like other people in this nation who don't do any work and just live on benefits. I thank you that I'm not like other people in this, this pandemic, but I take the COVID restrictions seriously. I thank you, God, I'm not like other people in my town who eat every meal out of the microwave or away from the takeaway. I thank you, God, I'm not like other people and I clear up after myself and my dog. I thank you, God, that I'm not like other people and I don't let my children run wild. I thank you, God, that I grew up in a time where people actually respected one another, not like today. <clears throat> Take a look inside yourself. Do you ever think things along those lines? And by the way, if you just cut into this video in the last 30 seconds, those are examples of things that uh, I think sometimes we think rather than I think are true. The idea that the problem is outside and not inside me. That's the thing that's going on here. And do we ever think like that? The Pharisee in the parable has turned life into something quite competitive. Something where he brings comparison. I've got this right, everybody else has got this wrong. It's almost like he's turned life into this survival of the spiritual fittest comparing self to others and finding everyone else lacking and justifying himself by comparison. And if we believe life is about being a good person, we will naturally judge and compare. And two things, we'll either end up being self-righteous, like this Pharisee and very condescending of others, I am all right, it's everyone else. The problems of the world are not my fault, because I'm good and I'm right, it's got something to do with everybody else and nothing to do with me. We'll either turn out like that or we'll end up beating ourselves up. And if we do honestly start to compare ourselves with others, I say start to, it's quite likely we do this all the time. We compare ourselves with others, people in our church, our friends. If we do that and we're honest with ourselves, not like this Pharisee, we start to find actually we don't measure up. You know, you start to think, well, I'm not as kind as so-and-so in my church. I don't look after my kids as well as so-and-so down the road. I'm not as knowledgeable as somebody I met at school. I'm not as good at my job as that guy over there who sits at the other desk. I don't have the same social standing as that person over there. Those kind of things, those comparisons in life that we are not like other people. And so we'll end up, if we, we spend our life comparing, we'll either end up thinking we're just the bee's knees, the best thing, or we just end up despising ourselves, thinking we're the lowest of the low. And you see, Jesus comes and he undoes all that way of thinking. See, for Jesus, it's not about the comparisons. He's not impressed with those who say, I thank you, God, I'm not like that person. Or... God, why am I not like that other person? He's not into these comparisons. Jesus commends the tax collector in the parable for simply praying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
It seems that Jesus calls us to just humbly be ourselves. Meaning that we are the ones who acknowledge the need of God's mercy and God's grace in all things. And we take responsibility for all our own failures and our inadequacies. And we recognise that in everything we need God's mercy, his kindness at all times and in all things. And that as we humbly bring our lives before God, he will lift us up. He will exalt us. Our righteousness will come from him. Our right standing will come from him. So rather than us telling God how good we are, it's when we humble ourselves and, and recognise and call on our need for God's mercy that we allow our Heavenly Father to tell us how much he loves us and how much he is pleased with us. So how would you rather live? Constantly trying to measure up to others, comparing yourself, telling God how good you are, trying to prove yourself to the world, or humbly accepting that you are one in need of God's mercy and that God, rather than me telling God how good I am, hearing God's voice saying to me, you're loved, you're pleasing. Just stop for a moment and think about your life and how you live and how you think about yourself and how you think about the world around you. Which way do you live in life? Are you constantly trying to be good, constantly trying to prove yourself, constantly trying to tell God and trying to tell the world around you, I'm okay. I'm a good person. I'm not like everybody else. I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm doing good. I'm trying to do good. Or are you the kind of person that says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And in doing so, I want listening for the voice of God saying, I love you. You are my pleasing child. Which way would you rather live? Which way do you live? The good news is, through Jesus and our need for God's mercy through Jesus has a way in which God will say, I love you. I am pleased with you. Jesus shows us that he looks for those who are humble and will exalt them. So humble yourselves before God. Know his favour and his pleasure on you. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Through Jesus. Amen.